All right, back, back by popular demand. We're going to watch a little video here about how to graph linear inequalities. Okay, this one's going to be a short one. This is kind of an easy topic. Uh, makes perfect sense to do a video on this one because you've already seen how to graph lines, both in Algebra 1, and we reviewed it here in this class. And if you know how to graph a line, you have pretty much known 99% of the way to graph a linear inequality. In fact, you may have already seen this in Algebra 1, so this will just be a quick refresher for those of you that remember that. For those of you that don't, it's easy enough to pick up pretty quickly. Okay, so there's three example problems I'm going to do on this video, and then there's a couple that you can do on your own. All right, so we'll look at the first one. And the first one says y is greater than or equal to negative one-half x minus four. Okay, so just like when you graph a line, you have to make sure that your equation is in slope-intercept form, or mx plus b form. In this case, it is. So we can label our m negative one-half, and our b is negative four. From that information, we can go right down to our graph, and I've already put the point there to start. Our y-intercept is negative 4, that's our b, so we begin on the y-axis at negative 4. Then, we can use the slope, negative 1 half, rise over run, to tell us how to get some other points. So since it's negative 1 over 2, we can go down 1 and over 2 to the right, and we get a second point. We can also do that on the other side, but we have to go up one and to the left two to get another point. Now it comes time to connect the dots. We're going to use a solid line. This is the first difference between an equation and an inequality. We're going to connect these dots with a solid line because there is a equal to inequality. There's a bar in our inequality symbol in the problem. We're going to look at another one where, a little bit later where there's not a bar and the graph is going to be slightly different. Okay, But more on that in a second. So we have a solid line connecting these dots. Now the other key difference when you graph a linear inequality as opposed to an equation is an inequality is actually a region of the graph. Okay, It's not just a line. We have to figure out which region we're going to shade as our graph. And the way we do that is we're going to pick a test point. So we're going to pick a point that is not on the black line that I just drew. The one I usually pick, because it's easy to work with when we do the arithmetic, is the origin, 0, 0. If for some reason your line contains the origin, then just pick another point. You could pick any point you want so long as it is not on the graph that you just drew, or not on the, the boundary line, that is, that you just drew on the graph. Okay, So what we'll do is we're going to test this point. So I'm going to go into the inequality that we were given in the problem. y is greater than negative 1 half x minus 4. And I'm going to plug in 0 and 0 for x and y. And that's what I get. I get 0 is greater than or equal to negative 1 half times 0 minus 4. I do the arithmetic and I find out that 0 is greater than or equal to negative 4. And I stop and I ask myself, is that true? And it is. So since that is true, I am going to shade on the region that contains my test point. So in this case, I am shading above that boundary line because that contains 0, 0, which I know makes the inequality true. So what you see there, all that stuff shaded in black, every point in that region will satisfy the given inequality. So that is the graph of the inequality. Okay, we're going to look at another one. Okay, this one's a little different. 3x minus 4y is greater than or equal to 4. This one's in standard form, sort of. The x and the y are on the same side. Just like we talked about with lines, graphing lines, that is, you can't graph this equation in a standard form. You have to turn it into y equals mx plus b form. So we're going to do that here. We'll subtract 3x from both sides. We get negative 4y is greater than or equal to negative 3x plus 4. Then we have to divide the whole inequality by negative 4, but be careful. Just like in the first chapter when we were solving inequalities, there's an inequality sign in this problem. We're dividing by a negative number. The inequality sign, you guessed it, has to flip. So now we rewrite this as y is less than or equal to positive 3 fourths x minus 1. We're in slope-intercept form. So we can graph our inequality, just like we graphed a line. So we'll begin at negative 1 on the y-axis. We'll move up 3 over 4 to the right and get a point. 
We can also move down three, but then we have to go to the left four to get another point. We can connect those dots again because we're looking at equal to. We're going to use a solid line. Now we're going to check our test point. Zero, zero is not on the line, so that's a good candidate for a test point. So we're going to plug it into our inequality. We get zero is less than or equal to three-fourths times zero minus one. Now I use the slope-intercept form version of the inequality. You could have also used the original 3x minus 4y is greater than or equal to 4. It really doesn't matter. One is just a different way to write the other one. They're both the same inequality. They're just manipulated with algebra to look different. So we get 0 is less than or equal to negative 1. So again, we look and we ask ourselves, selves, is 0 less than or equal to negative 1? And the answer is no. 0 is bigger than negative 1. So since this is not true, we are not going to shade the side of the line that contains the test point we used. So instead, we shade below that boundary line. So now everything on that boundary line or below will make the inequality 3x minus 4y greater than or equal to 4 true. We'll try one more. Now this one's a little different. We've got x plus 3y is greater than 15. There's no equal to bar. So we'll subtract x from both sides because again we can't graph this until we have y by itself. We get 3y is greater than negative x plus 15. Then we have to divide through by 3. It's a positive 3, so we don't have to worry about flipping the sign. y is greater than negative 1 third x plus 5. Okay, so we'll graph just like we've been doing. We'll start at 5. We'll pick a couple other points. So we'll go down 1 and over to the right 3. We can go up 1 and over to the left 3, and we get our 3 points there. Now it's time to connect these dots. The way I'm going to connect these dots, because this is a strictly greater than inequality, there is no bar, we're going to use a dotted line okay, to connect these points. Because what that's really saying is the line y equals negative 1 third x plus 5 doesn't make the inequality hold. So even though this is kind of like a fence to our shaded region, it's almost like an invisible fence. It's not part of the solution. It's going to be everything either above that dotted line or below that dotted line is going to make our inequality true. So again, we have to test which side we're going to shade, and we'll use 0, 0. Oh, and again, there's another reminder that it's a dotted line. So 0, 0 we're going to put in. We make 0 is greater than negative 1 third times 0 plus 5. We can simplify that. 0 is greater than 5. Well, is 0 greater than 5? I don't think so. So we're not going to shade below the dotted line where 0, 0 is on the grid. Instead, we're going to shade above. Okay? So everything strictly above that dotted line will make the inequality x plus 3y is greater than 15 true. That's graphing inequalities. You may have seen it in Algebra 1. If you haven't, it's 99% the same stuff that we did earlier in the chapter with lines, except the two major differences is sometimes you're going to use a dotted line, and like in this example, you use a dotted line when it's strictly greater than or strictly less than, and there's no equal to bar underneath that. And the second difference is you have to do some shading, and the most convenient way to do that, like I said, is to use a test point. Either 0, 0. If 0, 0 is on the line, pick something else. Really doesn't matter. Okay? So you have a couple example problems to try. Give those a shot. We'll talk about them tomorrow, and we'll do some more stuff involving graphing linear inequalities. Have a great evening, and I will see you in class tomorrow.